whatever geographic area you got, who care about life? And I'm going to spend, wow, 10 bucks to send it out to 3,000 people. And you know what? Two months later, when you have a live speaker come and speak to your group, and you send that out, you put that in your thing, and you boost it, guess what? People you've never seen show up and want to, want to hear about that. Right? Does it make sense? I laid it out, you know, chunks enough so you can use it. That's our future. That's our future, and it's a good future. That's what's going to make democracy survive. Because, folks, here's, here's the bottom line. The bottom line is that our political system is so corrupt because we haven't built a model for it that doesn't rely on money. The problem is, is that only the wealthiest people in your community can run for even something stupid like county commissioner. And the lady who asked ran in Portage County, Portage County, small, rural, spent $90,000 for every county commissioner. We can't have that. So what do we have to do? We have to get engaged as people, and we have to do things like run for county central committee, which, how many of you guys know what that is? Few, good, better, more than ever, right? More than ever before, right? And then the county central committee actually has to do things like I just talked to you about. They have to have a Facebook page. They have to bring speakers in to talk about their values. They have to, you know, educate the community and recruit young people on their issues, right? Like student loan debt. Good issue. Good conservative answers for that. You talk to anybody, any young people in your community about good conservative answers to student loan issues? No, you're not. That's why they're not coming to your meetings. Okay? And the Republican Party in these counties has to start being strong enough to fundraise among the common people so that they can take somebody who is a good person that believes in their values and help them run for county treasurer or auditor or whatever it may be and not be beholding or risking their entire family's wealth, okay, to get elected. And if we don't do that, nothing's going to change. It's just that simple. And, 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 and I'm not saying that. There's a guy named uh, Doug Priest down in Columbus, Franklin County. He's the bag man for the Republican Mafia, okay? All the lobbyist money comes through Doug Priest. And so the lobbyists want something done in the House, the Senate, or whatever. The money goes to him, goes to the party, goes out to the candidates, so they get the vote they want to get. And when we've talked to him, when we've had people running and talked to him, he's been very honest. He said, it's real simple. If we don't get the money from the lobbyists, we can't run the Republican Party. So if you don't vote the way we tell you, we're going to take you out because we're not going to get any money. Now that's an honest answer. It's criminal, it's wrong, it's bribery, but it's an honest answer. I can respect that. That's the problem. And until we come up with a better solution, what do you expect them to do? Right? We gotta, we gotta think, we gotta do something. So he's coming with the hook. I hope this has been helpful to you. Has it been? Okay. I do want to just leave that. At least, does anybody have any question about the presidential candidates? Or, any, or anything else they want to Yeah. Yeah. Timmy. Now, that's the question, isn't it, Tim? That is the question. I am hopeful for this reason. Because of the process where you've got to go through the committee, the judicial committee, and though Grassley's been, you know, wavering a little bit, you know, he's, been, he's, what, he's 80 from Iowa, he's 80 years old, but he's up for re-election, okay? He's up, he's one of the senators up for re-election. And so that's a big key, I think. So, folks, what happens is President Obama will say, I nominate this person, and it goes to the Judicial Committee, and the committee has to take that up, and then they have to vote him out of the committee, and then it has to go to the full Senate, and then McConnell has to say, we're going to vote on it, because he can, you know, they can come out of committee but not do it. And then if McConnell says, I'm going to bring it out of the committee uh, and for a vote, 
then you can do the filibuster, okay, and try to stop it. I hope it doesn't get that far. That's my goal. I hope it never comes out of committee. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, and I actually was worried that he would do it last week when they were in recess. I thought Obama would say, bam, I'm going right now, because then you would go to the 4-4 four to four Senate to get that, you know, decided, and if they locked up 4-4, four four, you'd have it. So I actually thought they would move that quickly, okay? I'm hopeful, Tim. I'm hopeful this is a seminal moment. And honestly, folks, I, you know, <laughs> It, there were a lot of people when the Scalia passed that were very sad. And there were a lot of people who were questioning God's will. Right? You're kind of like, really? Really, Lord? You know, you know, we're trying to go the other way, you know? And now you take out Scalia, you take our main guy out? <coughs> what's the message here? And maybe the message is what, what's really the message we should have. And that is that this presidential election is really about Supreme Court judges above all else. And we were drifting off of that. We were getting, you know, we're, immigration is important, ICE is important, all that. But nothing's more important than these Supreme Court judges. And by Scalia's passing, it has become the focus. And that's a good thing. And it's no one else is good about it. We don't get the vote on Supreme Court justices, do we? This time we do. This time we do. And that's good. And that's a good thing. So. It'll be an interesting year. Hopefully, it'll be a good year. Hopefully, we turn the corner this year. Because I don't know if we can go much further the other way, but yes? It's it's it, it, it because they're they're you know it's so overwhelming it's difficult for them to do but here's the but the point is that they do message to people like Bernie Sanders they do message to people you know and it's it's up to our leadership to push those messages up to them and bring their answers back to you as I'm doing to you today. <laughs> Right. And then when they asked him the question in the debates, he took about five minutes before he said, oh, well, it's based on 16%. Right, yeah. But that whole thing is still uh, kind of based on Well, see, and this is the problem. Well, but, but, but first of all, they're not about the news. They've got an agenda. No, Second of all, so, but second of all, what you need to understand, and I know you're so frustrated, okay? But Donald Trump is actually talking to American people in the language they understand. We're not. Most people don't know what a fat tax is and could care less. When Barack Obama beat Mitt Romney, Mitt Romney won every single category. You wear this? And the exit polls, they said, who would be better on self-defense? Mitt Romney. Who would be better on accounting? Mitt Romney. Who would be better on job? Mitt Romney. Who would be better on every single thing? Mitt Romney won. Except for one. Does he care about me and is he a nice guy? That's what he won on. Barack Obama won one category and won the election. Donald Trump is, we don't win anything, and I'm going to win. To us, it's like, what does that mean? You want to get a, a void of knowledge? Go to Donald Trump's webpage and look for his policy statements. They're one page of nothing. Okay? They're one page of nothing. No, I actually understand. Yeah, that's what I was but, but my point is this. We have to talk to people the same way. Because, folks, they just spent 50 years uneducating our people. And so they talk in sound bites. 
Donald Trump had a whole nine-year run on TV with a stupid phrase, you're fired, right? There was no substance. So don't worry as much about the substance, worry about the message, okay? Because it's about emotion, okay? So I just caution you with that and then work through your leadership and also the leaders have a responsibility to defend you, to not sell you out or you know, ask you to do things that aren't productive. I promised my tea party when I started three things. I will never waste your time, your money, or your effort. But if I ask you to do something, you will know it's important for you to do and you must do it or we don't have that relationship. And that's how I built one of the best tea parties in the state. Yes, sir. Yeah, and the answer is nothing except we're playing both against each other, okay? So, you know, Donald Trump was the original birther against Obama. He was the one who was paying lawyers and said he had proof in Hawaii and all this stuff. And he was wrong, and now he's saying Ted Cruz doesn't, can't run, and, and he was wrong. Now, I don't know if you've heard this, but someone in Illinois just sued to keep Ted Cruz off the ballot in Illinois. And it's coming up for uh, Trump this week, okay? So I think that will be decided. The, the, the evidence I've read, and I've asked the Cruz people directly, I've done my own research, I've talked to attorneys, the bottom line is he, he is a natural born citizen under our laws, okay? He, he can't run, there's no question about it, and again, Ted Cruz is one of the best constitutional lawyers we've got. You think he's going to go and, and run and not think he could win that case? Okay, the guy has won, argued in front of the Supreme Court and won a ridiculous amount of cases in very tough life issues, social issues. He's a smart guy. Donald Trump's you know, just making accusations. Board of elections have said Ted Cruz is followed. There was to make that decision. He's on the ballot. And they said he's valid. And that's, that's End of story. It was all nonsense. It's all nonsense. It's dumb. One last question, very quickly. Oh, yeah, I didn't really have a question, but you talked about this whole thing. Yeah, bright, shiny object. Yeah, bright, shiny object. And so, you know, just to show you, they talked about the mental campus campaign several times. I ran for the State House for 617 in South East Columbus. So, good friends of mine and all those sort of guys, like both sides of the party. My constituency office district is occupied by the Capitol. His office is in his district. Uh -huh. And on a hot topic issue, he will get five to ten to million dollars. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Right? And that's the state of it. Right. So, these folks have a lot of influence over our lives. And so I love that you brought that up. Yeah. And again, you know, the great thing is, we we got Judge Tim Grudel sitting here. He's not hiding. You can get hold of him. Anytime you want. He never hid. Okay. Yeah, I know. It, but so, so let me give you an example. So they tell me they're going to have five people. There's going to be a Cleveland office. He's going to know it, and he's going to know it. They're going to tell you, you know what? You're going to be able, next week, you're going to be able to walk into that office and look somebody in the eye and say, I have a question. I need an answer about Ted Cruz if you're going to get an answer. Okay? That's the way it works. I don't know what else I can tell you. I'm just saying, what happens theoretically, how many emails do they answer? Well, they, they, that's the point. Not that many. Okay? So the point is, you have to have some hierarchy, but, but we have to work within that. And a lot of people get frustrated because they think they're being ignored. You know, but it's not a matter of I want to ignore you, it's on the capability of responding to you. You know. I'm gonna to have to move on now because now Ramada is gonna beat me up by the way. Yeah, thanks for being patient on my time. Right now for, for Tom's sake.